Hello guys, Crispy here, welcome back to another Sunday video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be testing the Radeon RX 6800 in 2024. So the RX 6800 released back in October of 2020, and it's basically three and a half years old at this point. Yeah, right? I know. How is this almost four years old? But don't let its age deceive you. It's still quite a powerful 1440p gaming GPU with its RDNA 2 architecture, 3080. 840 shading units, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and a 256-bit memory buzz. Sounds kind of high-end by today's standards, right? <clears throat> 48. Anyway, this card released for 579 US dollars MSRP, and now it can be found for around 380 dollars on sale. Brand new, by the way. <laughs> so if you buy it used, there's a chance that you can even get it for even cheaper than that. Yeah. Yes, a $200 reduction in 3.5 years doesn't really sound like much, but you gotta remember that these weren't really selling for MSRP back when they came out, right? A 6700 XT was costing around like 900 to 1000 bucks back then, and the 6800 was pretty scarce, I think. At least I was trying to buy one at the time and I couldn't find one. And well, fast forwarding to 2024, if you want a 16 gigabyte GPU in this price range, you'd be looking at an RTX 4060 Ti 16GB. And that's not only 70 bucks more expensive, minimum, <laughs> it also performs worse than the RX 6800 right here. This is like 15 to 20% faster than the 4060 Ti crazy. <laughs> now granted this consumes a lot more power at 250 watts, it doesn't have the DLSS upscaler which is superior, the better frame generation, the better ray tracing experience, but does it even need it guys? Or can it push native 1440p with high FPS just fine with its raw performance? Let's find out. Shall we? Before we go play some games, let's go over the PC specs first. I'm running a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D with half of its cores disabled, so it's basically the same as a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 megahertz RAM CL30 in dual channel, and a 2 terabyte SSD for all of the games tested. Let's start with a recent title, Horizon Forbidden West. We're playing at 1440p resolution using TAA and the highest settings here, aside from motion blur, vignette, and chromatic Aberration. And will you look at that? It's looking fantastic here at 1440p max settings and it's getting 60 to 70 frames per second all of the time, at least here in this scenario. And this is the Burning Shores DLC, guys, which is definitely a bit more intensive than the base game. As you can see, though, it does drop a little bit from 60 FPS from time to time, but it's only in, in these settlement areas, town areas in the DLC as well, because if you're playing the base game, it's it's gonna stay above 60 100% of the time. Moving on, as you can see, still keeping up above 60 frames per second. That's really good, guys. And that means that it's gonna be a buttery smooth experience. It's quite strong performance as well. And notice that this is not stuttering at all. That's because we got those 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Even 12 gigabyte GPUs, especially with frame generation from the Nvidia side of things, you know, they do uh, lose a little bit of performance in this particular area right Right here this one is also dropping a few frames but that's because they actually max out the vram because frame generation uses a bit more vram on 12 gigabyte cards all right around this area as you can see it's getting up into the 70s super stable experience still really really smooth i'm gonna fight a few robots uh, but this area represents like most of the game at least in terms of fps and it, these fps are what you should expect in the main base game basically so again like the 5 to 10 fps improvement compared to back in the town of Burning Shores. All right, here we go. Oh boy, it's actually dipping down into the 50s sometimes. Nothing that some DRS in this game wouldn't solve and it looks really, really good. So yeah, just use that. Target 60 frames per second and it's always gonna stay above 60. Uh, but yeah, here, this is looking fantastic, guys. Next up is Cyberpunk 2077, can't wait to kill Bob by the way. We're playing at 1440p using the high preset and no resolution scaling. I'm also going to disable these over here because I don't like their effects. If you want to leave them enabled, expect like one or two less FPS, it's not really a big difference. And this is it. And here we have it guys, I'm going to start counting our FPS and we're getting around 70 to 80 frames per second. The visuals look absolutely amazing, even though this is not like old 
ultra settings and ray tracing is disabled, it still looks insane in this game, right? With RT, it does look quite a bit better, but the AMD Radeon GPUs aren't really that great using ray tracing. I'm still gonna try it for a little bit, and goodbye, Bob! There we go, it's been a while since I killed you here. <laughs> I'm gonna go around this roundabout right here, getting 60s and 70s. Yep, I think it's safe to say it's gonna stay above 60 frames per second for the most part. What the hell just happened here? <laughs> the physics in this game are kind of like cyber bugs still. With 70 plus FPS average, there's nothing to worry about. That roundabout area near Bob was actually one of the most intensive areas in the base game. There are a couple of more intensive areas, but I doubt it will drop from 60 FPS. It's actually really stable and really dang smooth. And look at that, this game on high settings it doesn't even utilize 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Anyway, let's stop it right there and let's use some ray tracing next. And for that, I will be using the ray tracing ultra preset, which enables everything right here. And it looks really, really good. Uh, but we will need to utilize some FSR, okay? I'm gonna set it to quality here at 1440p resolution, which looks okay. And I'm gonna disable these options again. And look at that, guys. We cut our FPS in half, basically, to run ray tracing and it's using FSR on top so of course things look a little bit more fuzzy and noisy and pixelated in some areas and now the FPS are dropping by quite a lot look at 29 so it's less than half of the performance that we got previously wait a second come on Bob 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 I'm coming I'm coming towards you I'm gonna kill you you better guard it Oh, goodbye, Bob. There we go. Thank you so much, police, for the help. <laughs> they know that Bob is a very bad person. But yeah, if it drops into the 20s, this is not great. Now let's play an easier to run esports title, it's CS2, and we're playing it at the high settings preset, but with two times MSAA instead of the default four times, cause you know, it looks good anyways, and you get more FPS like this. All right, here we go. So you can expect around like 300 frames per second, which is more than enough for this game. Oh, double headshot, that's beautiful. It feels really, really smooth and playable, obviously. And if you want to play competitively, even with the high settings preset, said you can do it absolutely fine with some two times MSAA. Oh boy, there we go. Oh, this is going very well. We actually stand a little bit of a chance here, I guess. You know what? I'm kind of in the mood to try some AWP action as well. So should we do it? Yes, I guess so. Don't oh, you bastard. Let's try this out. There we go. Starting off great here. The guy was just jumping there and that one was also jumping, but we got him. Okay. Alrighty. There we go, another one down, and another one down. One bullet left. Come on, up. Oh, no, there's one. Okay, I got him, I got him. It's all good. Oh, yes. This is great. Like, this is one of the first times that I'm actually using high refresh rates on my capture card to make a video like this. Because usually I stick to 60 hertz, because I usually play on a... A 4K monitor, which only allows me to set it to 60 hertz most of the time. But no, here today I, I changed the monitor around and I'm using a 240 hertz 1440p OLED. And yeah, the capture card actually allows me to go up to 144 hertz. Nice, okay, Keiju the Fogo Infernal in the house, my friends, we're wrecking them all! Can't wait to go to, like, uh, Call of Duty Warzone and get completely wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what's gonna happen. I can finish first place a lot of times here in Deathmatch and Counter-Strike, but then I go to freaking Warzone and I can't play the damn game for some reason. All right, there we go. Finish first place with 87 kills. That's awesome. All right, lastly, before we go to the next game, I just want to throw a smoke out right here. See the FPS inside of the smoke. Start counting them. So it drops down to the what? 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 Oh. Okay, it drops down to the 100s sometimes, and if I throw a grenade on top of it, it should drop a little bit further into the 150s. So again, if you have a 144Hz 1440p monitor or 165Hz, it's always going to run maxed out. And if you have like 240Hz, it's still going to be an insane experience. And well, since we mentioned Warzone, here it is. It's Warzone Season 3 crossover with Modern Warfare 3, and we're playing at 1440p using the Ultra Settings preset with 70% 
100% VRAM scale target, high textures, and I disable depth of field right here. Everything else is set to the high preset or ultra preset, actually. All right, so we're dropping, guys. I'm gonna start counting our FPS. I've already died like three times and the game just started. Oh, but we got one. We got one. Finally, I'm doing something for the video. Good stuff. <laughs> so down here, you can expect like 130 to 150 frames per second. Sometimes you can go up to like 160s, but most of the time it's gonna hover around like 110 to 120, as you can see right now. Should we go up there? I know there are some people up there because they usually camp around here. Let's go. No, 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 boy. Come on, let me go. Now, my terrible skills aside, this is a lovely, very, very smooth experience. 1% lows are at 55 right there because the frame time graph shows a few stutters here and there. That's completely normal here in Warzone, unfortunately. <laughs> Hello there! How are you going? <laughs> Thank you for the kill. Uh, he was just standing there. Oh my god, I should have seen this coming. Okay, yeah, you know what? That's enough. You already know it's at around like 120 FPS average and I suck at this game and I don't want to play it anymore. So let's move on. Now it's the beautiful Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1440p using the favor quality settings or ultra settings in the game. It's just a preset. Not everything is set to the maximum, all right? But it looks absolutely gorgeous like this. Look at that, guys. How beautiful is that? And it plays fantastic at the same time. You could optimize the settings, of course, use like hardware unboxed optimized settings, and then you'd see like 120, 130, even 140 frames per second while looking like 10% worse than this. But I mean, you don't need to do that. Now the question is, will we see Jack? He's usually around here, I think. I don't think we will be able to see that bastard, unfortunately. We need to wait until GTA 5, because in recent videos, he's just not there for some reason. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. We got a Bob situation right here. Let's go. Come over here, Bob. <laughs> You're coming with me to Strawberry. The point in this game is not to kill Bob. It's just to drag him along with us and torture him. Yep. You can, what the heck? <laughs> I was looking at the camera there. Sorry, Roach. I'm so sorry. So, get over here. Roach. Bob. Bob, where are you going? No. What are you? Oh, gosh. Okay. 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 Bob. Hello. Why do you do this to me, Roach? Now we gotta go get Bob again. No, I'm dead. Are you serious? I didn't finish the benchmark. Start counting our FPS again in town, getting down into the lower 70s. Everything is still buttery smooth. Zero stuttering on that frame time graph, which is awesome to see even in an intensive area like this one. The 16 gigabytes are kind of overkill as well. It's not even utilizing eight gigs, as you can see. No problems, guys. If it doesn't drop right here, it won't really drop anywhere from 60 fps ready for another really smooth experience this is forza horizon 5 at 1440p with four times msaa and the highest settings here and look at how smooth that frame time graph is it's absolutely beautiful my friends <laughs> Just a sight to be old. Oh my gosh. It is handling it like a champ, basically. 1440p max settings with four times MSAA. It looks super crispy as well. I can see a little bit of aliasing right there, by the way, but it's so minor. I don't care. Look at the FPS dropping at the moment. 80s, 70s. Okay. But that's still very promising, guys. 75 with a lot of cars on screen. Yeah, it's not gonna drop from 60. You can max this game out at 1440p, have a tremendously good experience, buttery smooth. I mean, all you need is 60 FPS in this game to be able to enjoy it properly. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just gorgeous at the same time. Look at that, even getting out of the tunnel, it drops to like 66 minimum. That's the most intensive thing that you can do in this particular title. And it only drops for like a split second anyways. Next up is Apex Legends. We're playing this one at 1440p using the highest settings aside from this one because I found it to introduce a little bit of stuttering on very high or ultra. So I set it to high and let's do this. All right, here we go. While dropping, we're seeing above like 150 FPS all of the time, which is absolutely phenomenal, of course. Still a few frame time spikes right there, which I don't really like. And I haven't really seen that on NVIDIA GPUs. Maybe it's just a driver thingy. It's dropping into the the 180s sometimes but 
it is just a great experience with the 6800. It's such a good GPU here for 1440p gaming. Indeed. Let's try to get some of them bastards. Wait a second. I wish I had my ultimate ready. I almost got him. Yeah, that one is down already. It wasn't me. So we need to be over careful, maybe. Hmm, I'm trying to spot someone, but I'm not really seeing anybody else. They just left the, the other guy to die there. <laughs> The ultimate is almost ready, so I really hope I don't die over here. Come on, I, sh I should probably get away from here. Also dropping down into the 140s there with those smoke effects. That's the thing about Apex Legends. You can get like 200 FPS average, but once an ultimate is going on and a ton of explosions are happening and so on, um, it's gonna drop by quite a lot. And speaking of, I got my ultimate ready. Right here seems to be a good spot because it's getting 160 FPS without anything happening. Let's throw a couple of smokes or a single smoke I guess at the same time and as you can see in worst case scenario it drops to like 88 FPS that's still gonna be amazing it only drops for a split second anyways most of the time it's gonna be buttery smooth and very stable even at the highest settings aside from that single setting of course <laughs> it is time to visit Jack in the good old GTA 5 oh yes <laughs> we're playing this one at 1440p again <laughs> two times msaa and the maximum settings aside from post effects right here yeah post effects introduces motion blur and bloom to the image and i don't like it these are more cpu intensive settings and i want to make it gpu bound so they're turned off and yeah look at that 150s 188 that might be a little bit of an issue guys because if the fps are high enough to break the engine in this game which uh, happens at like around 180 fps but sometimes it can happen with a little bit lower FPS than that. It will start stuttering. Yes, having super high FPS in this game is, is bad, basically. All right, you usually want to stay uh, below like 160, so it's... 100% stable, okay? But so far, so good. And here we are dropping down into the 90s. Look at that. <laughs> it's very different from being in the city area, right? This is basically the most it will drop to because of the bushy areas. Hello, Jacqueline. How's it going? Tell Jack to show up more often, please. All right, over here, it's dropping into the mid 90s. As you can see. So yeah, it's going to be a very stable experience. Go, Bob, Bob. There we go. And uh, super, super enjoyable one here in GTA 5. To be expected, this is an older title at this point. It should run very well on the RX 6800. Okay, now we got an extremely intensive title, Alan Wake 2. At 1440p, using native resolution and the high settings preset, with no ray tracing, of course. And it is good for like 40-ish frames per second. 40-something FPS is actually super playable for a game like this. It has a few frame time spikes, but those aren't really noticeable even if I do this. I can't really tell that the game is stuttering at all. Um, I've also seen those frame time spikes with other AMD GPUs, so it seems like it's a driver issue. Actually, some of you have told me in the comments that it is because of the latest drivers and it won't happen with the older drivers. It's a bit of a shame, but nothing that an FPS lock won't fix. You can, however, utilize some FSR2 here if you'd like. So I'm going to set it to like quality here, which renders the game at 960p and then it upscales it. And as you can see with FSR2 set to quality and the high settings, it can actually get 60 FPS plus in one of the most intensive areas in the game as well. This is uh, the forest area. It's super, super demanding in this particular title. Oh my God, like the stuttering is so annoying, actually. I'm going to lock it to 60, guys. <laughs> so I'm using Rivetuner Statistics Server to lock it to 60 FPS there. And as you can see, this is a much more stable experience when it comes to the frame time graph. And now it's a 60 FPS locked experience all of the time, even in worst case scenarios. No, it's still stuttering a little bit god damn it <laughs> why oh boy anyway yeah this is how i'd play this game you get the benefits from the high settings in this one uh, fsr quality still looks really good in this particular title at 1440p and again i'm using a 27 inch 1440p monitor for this it's a good enough implementation of fsr2 to, to the point where i would definitely choose these settings to play this game with next is hopefully fortnite and not stutter night but sometimes it is stutter night so i don't know 1440p directx 12 using the high 
high settings without nanite virtualized geometry which disables the lumen stuff which is ray tracing so not a good idea with a card like this in fact you shouldn't really use nanite in fortnite in general because even on my 4080 super it stutters all right here we go so far it's actually feeling like fortnite not stutter night so hopefully it stays like this because the frame time graph even while dropping is quite smooth as you can see i also installed the streamed assets from the game's launcher uh, that helps a lot with the smoothness as well and look at that over there my friends in the middle of the screen it is what you think it is it's the beautiful jack look at him oh yes and jacqueline on the other side and people are probably looking at me and thinking what the hell is he doing he didn't drop near a weapon can we spot somebody yeah there's a guy right there come on come on all right i got you i got you he was shooting at somebody else though and i think yeah he's right there all right, couple of kills already at the beginning. Very good 1% lows, way better than I was expecting in terms of stability. And it seems like we're playing Fortnite. Yes, th th there's a guy just, <laughs> just crawling over there. What? Hello, buddy? Did he go away? Oh, no, there he is. Okay, okay, another one down. Good stuff. Another weapon as well. There's a guy right there. All right, come on. There we go. And another one, come on. There you, it is. Good stuff. There's another one there. Wait, I'm gonna do this. Okay, that's John Wick right there, I think. Or Alan Wake, maybe. Okay, there we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that beauty. So dang smooth, my friends. Oh, this is lovely. Inside of a bush, by the way. Things don't seem to drop too much. And we got a hold of this car as well. And there's another guy right here. Wait. Oh, how did I miss that? Okay. All right, so good. All good. Is there somebody else behind us? Yep. <laughs> okay. And another one down. Oh, this is so much better than Warzone. I mean, I am so much better here than Warzone. <laughs> now it's The Last of Us Part 1, and we're playing this one at 1440p native, and the auto settings, which is the high settings preset. Look at that, 69 FPS right there. And the ultra textures. Oh, yeah. All right, let's start counting our FPS and look at that, guys. 80-ish frames per second, 90s even. This is not really that intensive here, of course, but we will go to an intensive area. And I have played it for a little bit already to adjust the settings and see if the auto settings are actually adequate. And my friends, it doesn't oh, drop from 60 yes. FPS. I'm very impressed at the performance in this game, okay? Awesome, awesome experience in The Last of Us Part 1, guys. Look at this right here. It's so beautiful, guys. There's no need to use FSR either which is very welcomed as well because the FSR implementation in this game is not really that great okay guys second part is on and here we go 61 FPS minimum right there with a little stutter because it was just loading that area you know and over here it usually drops down by quite a bit 69 look at that it's very stable it's 60 plus FPS all of the time i'm seeing a few frame time spikes over there which i don't really like but uh, i mean yeah it's probably just loading some things over here very intensive area as well dropping down into the 70s i thought it would drop more around here actually but no 69 66 yeah it's really really good it's slow field time now at 1440p using the high settings preset and i disabled the dynamic resolution scale as well as the upscaling we do have fsr3 here in this game which i will test in just a little bit but look at this even at native resolution we got some motion blur here <laughs> i want to disable it and we're getting around 60 frames per second guys which is once again very good for slow low field this is a very intensive game as i'm sure you're aware of it looks like crap as i'm also sure you're aware of but <laughs> it performs like crap at the same time and uh, yeah the rx 6800 at least over here in atlantis city which is a very intensive place in the game it's getting 60-ish fps on average you know it does dip down into the 50s sometimes but that's no problem really especially compared with something like a, a 3060 ti or a 3070 this is doing quite a bit better of a job so i'm gonna stop it there 54 fps and i'm gonna add a little bit of fsr 3s frame generation so i'm just enabling frame generation right here with fsr 3 as you can see the render resolution is still at 100 so the upscaling part of it is not working because 
frankly, we don't need it. <laughs> Frame generation alone will make it so the FPS are above 90 at all times, basically. As you can see, it feels way smoother. It does introduce a little bit of input lag, unfortunately, but I mean, I think I will take it because whenever you're shooting at things, uh, out there in space and other planets and so on, you are going to see more FPS than what you see here, and whenever you are in a city like this one, you're probably not gonna shoot um, a lot of people, I hope at least. You don't really need that super fast input lag, right? So yeah, now you can enjoy 90 plus frames per second with very, very similar visuals to the native resolution stuff, because upscaling is not at work. This is how it should run, by the way, without frame generation, or I, how I would expect it to run given the visuals. <laughs> Helldivers 2 is next at 1440p native res using the high settings preset and uh, this usually doesn't run very well on AMD GPUs because it doesn't max out GPU utilization and we're seeing the same thing still. It's at 92% here in the spaceship unfortunately and that means that down there in the world we'll probably get even lower GPU usage. And that is unfortunately exactly the case look at that 80 something percent GPU utilization and the performance isn't as good as it could have been because of that it's probably down to drivers or maybe just the game not being very well optimized for AMD GPUs but it's been like this ever since the game released and it's still like this well at the very least the RX 6800 even without being fully utilized can definitely provide you with 60 plus FPS at all times as you can see at least down here shooting these guys i'm playing on the hard difficulty by the way yeah it's not a problem it still feels very smooth and even if it does drop into the 50s it's not the end of the world the one percent lows are very stable in this game and it doesn't stutter at all which is amazing yeah grenades explosions everywhere still 60 plus look at that looking great as well here on high settings Visuals could be better, you know, I mean, it's not the prettiest game out there, but yeah, it, it still looks okay, right? And that one is dead. Anyway, it is fun, it is smooth, it's not the best it could be, but just disable that FPS counter and GPU usage monitor and have fun. Alright, now we got Hogwarts Legacy at 1440p using TAA on high, no upscaling, <laughs> and the high settings preset, and no ray tracing, of course. <laughs> And here we have it, we're starting in Hogsmeade, which is a very CPU-bound area of the game, but here with the 7800X 3D, or 7950X 3D, with half of its cores disabled, it's able to keep the GPU utilization up into the 98 to 100% usage range, which is of course GPU-bound. Right now we're dropping down into the 70s, as you can see, so things are definitely getting more GPU-intensive. I'm gonna take my broom out and follow the little river right here really fast and at the end of the river is where you're gonna see the least FPS in my benchmark run. Right now it's dropping to like 70 frames per second at the minimum. Okay, and this is it right here. This is usually where it drops the most. 65 FPS minimum. It's native 1440p as well. We got enough VRAM to, to play at these settings as well. You could increase the texture quality to ultra and still get the same FPS with slightly better visuals. It's just great. And finally, for the last game, before we go to the conclusion and I show you three more games, <laughs> I got Baldur's Gate 3 at 1440p using the Ultra Settings preset. And if you notice, the frame time graph is a little bit weird. It has some micro stuttering issues, so the 1% lows are gonna be awful. But uh, honestly, just moving the camera around like this, it feels really smooth anyways. And since we're getting like 90 to 100 frames per second most of the time, or between like 80 to 100 FPS, uh, it's safe to say it's gonna be a really awesome experience on an RX 6800. VRAM is also totally enough here under 8 gigabytes of utilization, so we got double of that. It's great, you know, it's great to see 16 gigabytes for future games, especially because lately a lot of games have been utilizing a ton of VRAM, you know. Really, really like this card, guys, and it's such a surprise. It's been a very big surprise to me, uh, the performance of it. All right, around here, it usually 
becomes a little bit more GPU intensive, especially when they start throwing these things over here, you know, with some fire effects and so on. Uh, yeah, as you can see right there. Not a problem, though. It doesn't really drop even from 70 frames per second. So, yeah, it's going to be very stable. This game is even playable with, like, 40 frames per second because it's a turn-based uh, combat system, you know. Um, so, yeah. Great stuff right here, once again, I would like to see that frame time graph being a little bit more stable, but again, the micro stutters aren't really noticeable, so it's fine. Alright guys, it's conclusion time, and as usual, I'll still have some games running right here, Assassin's Creed Mirage, Rainbow Six Siege, and Far Cry 6 in their built-in benchmarks, and all of them ran pretty well, and guys, I gotta say, I am extremely impressed with the RX 6800's performance, and I think for 380 bucks right now or even lower if you buy it used again I've seen some comments saying that some people are getting these for like 300 bucks that's insane value even in 2024 now yes it does have its shortcomings it's an older GPU so it consumes 250 watts actually that's the same as a 7700 XT and that's still a little bit slower than this Huh. <laughs> but at least compared to the 40 series, it's not as efficient, but I don't really care about that too much, honestly. 250 watts for the performance it gets is just fine, in my opinion. It also doesn't have the DLSS support, of course, that's reserved for NVIDIA RTX GPUs, and that's the far superior upscaler. Now, supposedly, AMD is going to release FSR 3.1, and it's gonna be a little bit closer to the LSS. I don't know, we'll have to see when that happens. I hope they do, because it will make this GPU immortal, basically. <laughs> and lastly, for the shortcomings, well, ray tracing is not really great in a GPU like this. The 6000 series wasn't really known for its good ray tracing performance, right? And even the 7000 series struggles quite a bit to compete with Nvidia in that regard. But not a lot of people care about ray tracing, and honestly, I, with the performance that we saw and the graphics that we saw in today's games, I'm fine without ray tracing, <laughs> okay? And that's been it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one very soon. As always, love you all. Bye-bye.